Hi, my name is Bill. In this video, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, React Hook Form version 6 and having the opportunity to, to share some of the insight and changes and features around this new release of the new version. And also take the opportunity to gather uh, feedbacks and opinions around the community, whether you have strong opinions about certain API doesn't feel right or things you prefer that to be changed. There's still going to be time before we actually release the full version. So uh, let's get started. First of all, we have three major goals we want to achieve on version 6. Uh, that is TypeScript support better, um, losing weight of the library potentially, and introducing new features and improving existing APIs. So let's start with TypeScript support. First of all, we made a, a, a kind of big change in terms of how we structure the TypeScript internally and externally. We now start to dedicate a page to document down all the exposed, exposed type that we actually offer to the consumer. Notice this has actually been dramatically reduced compared with the previous version. And this is what we try to fix because the previous version we just been fairly lazily just exporting all the types within the library. And that's problematically because it could potentially produce uh, breaking changes uh, when we actually modify the internal type inside. So now we decide to uh, keep the amount of the type uh, fairly small and exported for now. And over the year, we might, we might uh, increase more type to be introduced to the consumer. But for now, uh, we try to limit to the scope and everything we're going to export out as a type, we document, down, uh, document them down. Uh, at the official website. So that's TypeScript. Thanks to Kataro, he's spending a lot of time uh, refining, retuning all the types uh, internally and externally and have this idea to, to limit the amount of type that we actually export out, uh, more of a future-proof approach. Secondly, let's talk about losing weight of the library. Uh, so we have a few... Oops, I just got an update. So we do have uh, quite a few custom hook and components inside the library. Even that was do probably the most one of the smallest library on the market with the amount of feature that we have. But that still can be improved. First thing we consider to be look at is validation schema. Uh, as you guys would know, we support YIP as uh, first citizen class uh, for uh, schema validation. But now it's no longer the case. We actually have a dedicated uh, library called Hookform Resolver to hosting all the external uh, schema libraries such as Joe, Superstrict, and for the longer future, we might support other schema validation library, which is potentially smaller, better, and faster than uh, some of these ones right now. So it's more future-proof. And the other, the other thing we're saving quite a few uh, logic inside the library uh, so for people that are actually not using schema validation, it doesn't make sense for them to carry those logic. So this logic to move to the dedicated library does reduce the size of the library uh, quite a bit. And the second thing we decide to move out from the core is uh, error message. As optional chaining gets more and more popular around the community, uh, bundler and compiler uh, start to widely support optional, uh, optional chaining. Uh, we decide to move this component as a utility component or more like a plugin to its own space. So that in reduced the package size as well. So so you will find the version 6 actually uh, quite a smaller compared with version 5. For example, user form is roughly about 5 kilobytes now. And also we document down each uh, component or custom hook roughly how big they are so you know the budget of using each uh, custom hook or component. So that's talking to the site. Now let's talk about uh, probably something that you guys concerned the most, uh, excited and worried about the most, which is API. Uh, first of all, uh, we still kept the same amount of uh, method, uh, so use form um, functions uh, stay as it is. There is no change whatsoever. Some configuration being uh, enhanced, uh, for example, we remove the validation prefix out of all the configuration attributes. 
and we also introduce a new configuration uh, attribute called should unregister. Uh, this got brought up by uh, Sean, uh, which is you guys probably know as XYW. Uh, when he was trying a React hook form, one of the things that he concerned a lot is uh, that when input gets amount, data get lost. Uh, we had uh, quite a few issues in GitHub that people uh, reporting this sort of was a bug. But that's actually intentional because we try to mimic how native form validation uh, behaves when the input amount it gets amount or we remove the input uh, state uh, from the internal store by using mutation observable so uh, sorry to the wrong section so with uh, should unregister uh, now you have the ability to simply do not uh, using mutation observable uh, at all so your input state will actually remain uh, even the component gets in this. Something wrong with course and box. Oh yeah, there you go. Cool, it's coming up. So let me just quickly demonstrate you that. So coming. So let's say this. There's two inputs, and then we toggled it all. Uh, then we toggled the model. So both inputs uh, gets mounted it with should I just set to false when they mount back again. The state actually remained. So hopefully this change will make um, controller uh, form user feel a bit more familiar and more welcome on boarding with rear hook form. Second thing we'd like to talk about in the user form level is uh, watch and get values. So what change we made around watch and get values is basically we setting uh, watch to return next to the object rather than flat object so everything is a bit more consistent so we used to have this get values and then option uh, nested equal true then it will return nested object uh, for the form data now it's all consistent watch and get value will always return nested object we also changed set arrow in uh, set value first we change set arrow in terms of one of the behavior uh, Set arrow normally get used in terms for, you know, uh, programmatically set an arrow or you have uh, HTTP request on handle submit, you ha you're hitting your endpoint and come back with service arrow and you want to print out that arrow to the screen. So version 5, the arrow is actually not persist. Uh, so from version 6 onwards, if you're setting an arrow outside of scope or into input fields, uh, then that particular error will be persist and you, you need to actually using clear arrows to clear that particular error before you can actually proceed with submission. The second thing we changed on uh, set value is now we set value no longer setting the dirty uh, by default. So programmatically invoking set value no longer setting the form state dirty to true unless you told that so using uh, shit dirty flag other than that uh, form state is being also cleaned up a little bit uh, for example we consistently using boolean value with is so dirty is can become is dirty and all the other touched dirty fields uh, all become object instead of a set an object people get confused especially when they try to console log uh, and because in course sandbox it doesn't print out set uh, except object so that's better more consistency controller is probably the one of the biggest change that we introduce uh, version 6 uh, one of the probably most used component to work with external library like react select mem ui and, and design but one of the problems with uh, controller is we often have to changing the, the props name and changing the onChange name, which is why we have those extra props, which is called onChange name, value name, on blur name. Not intuitive. But what can you do when you know some of the external library doesn't follow the standard? So we introduce render props this time. So you know exactly what we actually passing down and what you supposed to be assigned to the internal component, and that solves some of the TypeScript issue as well.
So hopefully you find that useful. Next thing we want to look, talk about is user view array. Uh, user view is great. Uh, we reduce some of the weight inside the library uh, thanks to uh, Kia, our new core contributor. And and the other things we did was we made uh, we append prepend insert uh, individual um, input. It will get focus automatically, so you get free user experience improve uh, out of the box. Cool. So now let's talk about one of the new features that we're introducing in version six, except or uh, um, so this user watch is basically the functionality of watch. The only difference is a use watch only re render at the component sub component level, while a watch would render at the form level. So if you have some complicated form, larger form, uh, you want to isolate that re render within the child or sibling component, uh, this is the one uh, you want to go to. Uh, let me show you a quick example to the build. So basically that's the idea. Uh, you can you isolate the re-render uh, when you actually have user form, uh, a use watch invoked inside the component. Uh, so that's pretty much cover uh, the TypeScript, the API, the, the, the library uh, weight lose. Uh, the other thing is we actually, as you can see, we're actually improving on the docs uh, quite a bit. Uh, get started has been uh, relooked with more TypeScript um, example thanks to Philips filling all of that and then we have more videos uh, thanks to the community. Um, also don't feel, uh, please don't panic about all the changes. If you're on version 5, uh, you'll be fine. And if you want to migrate to version 6, feel free to check out the migration guide. Uh, I try to document down all the changes that we have and make things a little bit easier. And obviously, there are more things can be improved over the time. Okay, I think uh, I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, that's all the things uh, I can think of for version 6. And I'm, I'm, personally, I'm really, really excited. And, and thanks a lot of people that are involved in this uh, whole uh, process of making version 6. And feel free to leave your suggestions or your concerns or your questions in GitHub discussion. I try to answer them as soon as possible. Like I said, I don't mind to delay version 6 to roll up. It's better to roll up something that is awesome. Uh, I don't want to rush this. And I, I do want version 6 to be last for... Uh, for long so yeah uh, give us some feedbacks if you have otherwise we should be rolling out version 6 in uh, a week time thank you very much for listening